Hello everybody, this is Purge bringing you guys game two of this best of three between Rox and Orox. It looks like they messed up and forgot to set their team name this time, but that is absolutely okay. Uh, this is for the Gamecom Plantronics Dota 2 EU event. It was an open bracket with prizes. Um, some of the prizes include, included their Dota 2 branded uh, headsets. Those include the Battle Fury cosmetic for Faces Void. Super valuable, absolutely worth the cost. I have a couple myself. And uh, we're into game two here. So Keeper of the Light's going to start things off for Rox. Um, so, Orox needs to do something drastically different. They got completely outlaned there uh, by their picks. It was basically a picking win, in my opinion. Um, I mean, the, their play level seemed approximately equal, but um, I don't know. They, they just needed to have their lanes be much more set up. Enigma versus Lone Druid is Enigma favored slightly, I would say. At least Enigma safe lane is slightly favored. Um, Queen of Pain versus Magnus is Queen of Pain favored. And an aggressive tri lane versus a Alchemist Jakiro is going to win. Uh, especially when the alchemist goes to be uh, a a, um, a build that greedy, so uh, drafting starts things off. First pick is actually the Wisp again, and Rox is going to go with what works effectively, and that is the Wisp Chaos Knight. So they're doing pretty much the same thing. Batrider this time goes into their hands instead of Orox, and Orox goes for a Magnus Darkseer with a Shadow Demon. So mid Magnus, undoubtedly, they'll do a long lane Darkseer and a support Shadow Demon. It's going to really start off their lanes to be a lot nicer than they were previously. So what I would say they should do, if possible, if Rox ends up trying to go for like an aggressive tri lane, something like that, all they really need to do is uh, lane a Darkseer against it, ideally. Um, because Darkseer is less likely to die. He's got pretty good armor, so he's pretty tanky. And uh, Iron Shell against a Chaos Knight is always going to be a good time. Any melee carry, you are happy to lane a Darkseer against him, because if he goes for last hits, he will take damage. And just by putting Iron Shells on creeps, you are going to do damage to the guy. So it's very, very nice. So, uh, second round bannied coming up in a second here. First round bannied, again, we saw the Lifestealer as well as the Gyrocopter banned out by Orox. Apparently still don't like playing against those carries. And surprisingly seeing a Undying ban. I think uh, Rox right now is a little afraid of an aggressive tri lane that could come from a Shadow Demon. So, they're going to ban out an Undying. Uh, they're going to ban out an Undying. A uh, hero that actually doesn't see as much play as he used to. There was a period of time where he was actually banned first round. Um, and then Decay got um, balanced, I think. It got nerfed, and also they found out that it was giving too much HP gain than, uh, than it was supposed to. So, um, Undying doesn't see much play anymore, which is... It's okay. I like playing the hero a lot. He's a really fun hero. Um, being able to come back from that, uh, come back from Dying is always a really, really fun thing. Found out last night, or two days ago when I played him. Not fun to play against Batrider, though. Um, Sticky Napalm really does... Uh, it adds a lot of time between his casts uh, as you're turning around. It can be quite frustrating. So, Undying versus Batrider, not a good time. But regardless, he's banned now. And we will move into the uh, the rest of the bands here. Uh, once again, I can talk about the tournament a little bit more since we have some downtime. Um, I'm going to pull up the website here. Uh, prizes, first place is 2,000 euros. Second place is 1,000 euros. Third place, 500 euros. And the fourth place, um, they get uh, five of the Dota 2 branded Gamecom 780 headsets, all including the Battle Fury. There's also some open bracket prizing. You get five... Uh, Gamecom Commander headsets. Those are the expensive ones, I believe. Am I correct? Yeah, those are the really uh, the really nice headsets. So they have uh, two of them. One of them is more expensive than the other. The Commander is, I believe, about three hundred dollars. The uh, seven eighty is about eighty bucks, I believe. They both come with the Battle Furies. Um, so some of the people just by playing in the tournament end up getting some headsets, which is pretty cool. So. All right, uh, what else we got? We got Lena drafted or banned, excuse me, a Weaver band, a Quap band, and a Nature's Prophet as well. So. Kind of heroes all over the place. Rubik banned as well. Um, who gets first pick? Rox gets the first pick. Will they grab another Nyx Assassin? Nyx Assassin is probably gone. Yes, he is. They actually banned him themselves. So they're going to need another support themselves. Um, or a jungling hero. Orox was a little worried about the Queen of Pain mid, mid again. Um, understandably, because he's fantastic against a Magnus. It's just not a whole lot you can do about that. Um, other than Bottle Crow, like nobody's business and continue to shockwave. You can maybe get a kill. Once Magnus hits level 6, preferably with a gank from another hero, um, Rox doesn't have the best supports for it. Um, it's usually best if you can just shift over somebody that has some kind of a nuke because the extra 200 damage or so is usually enough to give you a burst versus a co-op. But we will not see that here. And Ancient Apparition is actually going to be their next support here. Kind of an interesting hero choice. Um, I'm guessing they're going to try to turn this into a global thing, perhaps. Like, they'll say, okay, well, we want to cast Knight Wisp gank this lane, so A, start your ulti up and he'll queue up his ulti. 
And as the ulti comes in, Chaos Knight will be able to uh, initiate, basically, and they'll be able to combo all that damage together. That's my guess. Um, keep in mind, they did, I think they banned the AA in the second round last game, so maybe they just really value it as a support. Um, it is great with Chaos Knight, by the way. It gives them even more disable. It's pretty much a guaranteed kill at that point, because you can start the Cold Feet, and then you can land the Chaos Knight stun and the Tether stun, and the Cold Feet stun will set in at the end of uh, the duration. So it's a pretty good combo, and you know, AA, I think, is a great hero regardless. He's pretty squishy, so you have to be careful with him. But um, Leshrac is going to be drafted by uh, Orox here. Another great stun. Shadow Demon Leshrac, great stun combo. Gives them... Great damage potential. We are dropping. We did drop a little bit of frames, guys. I'm just taking a look at that now. I'm not sure what was going on. That was my fault, apparently. Uh, my internet having a little bit of trouble. But it is absolutely fine now. Looks like we're dropping no frames. Should be okay. It's looking okay to me. Necrolite? What? <laughs> I was not expecting a Necrolite pick. That is very surprising. Um... Couple things about Necrolite. I love the hero. Uh, I don't necessarily think he's extremely um, viable in Dota 2 Pro Scene at the moment. Um, Sadist is fantastic now. If you get kills, you get insane mana regen. His ulti, I think, is decent. Usually you have to cast it when a hero is full HP, not at half HP, is uh, the mistake that I usually make. I always like try to cast it when somebody's at half HP and it's always late. Um, it's good to cast it on somebody that's out of position because everybody pretty much nukes on him regardless. So. Um, could work in this lineup. It's going to make him very tanky, and it should allow them to push decently. They have pretty good disables already because of Wisp and Batrider and AA and Cast Knight. So I, I think the lack of disable that Necrolite's going to be thrown around is fine. And basically, he just needs to ulti the Magnus at every fight. And if they can ulti him and get him killed or bursted down, then um, it's going to really throw a big kink in what Orox is working with. So pretty cool to see Necrolite drafted here. Uh, last pick coming out of Orox in just a second. Shadow Demon, Leshrac, Darkseer, Long Lane, and Magnus Mid. Uh, looks like they need a hard carry, and it looks like they're a little unsure what they want to snag. There's a Necrolite on the enemy team, and there's a Chaos Knight. So um, you don't really need a specific kind of hard carry to ca counter the Chaos Knight, in my opinion. You have to be a little careful about heroes like Antimage, who are kind of squishy and rely on Blink to get away, because he does have a lot of disable. You can gank Antimage quite a bit, which can be a... Uh, a problem. But the last pick any second here. 14 seconds left, and they're going to go for a Juggernaut. Okay. Huh. Not the hardest carry here. Uh, I feel like Juggernaut is maybe not the right choice in this in this setup. Um, I guess it's going to be a Batrider long lane out of rocks. So, um, hypothetically speaking, they could push the tower quite rapidly. But I, I really don't know if this is going to be enough carry potential for them, honestly. Take a look at the players quick for the Raiding Team Rocks. They're currently up 1-0. We've got Solo playing the Batrider. Don't know what his name is playing the Necrolite. That was the Enigma player from the last game. This is perfect. He's playing Cast Knight. Yol is playing the Io. The last player is going to be... Yanskor Hearts Laidana is going to be playing the Ancient Apparition. He's actually going for a Chilling Touch first. Interesting. We don't see this very often, but it actually does increase their damage potential by a lot, especially if they get into a level 1 fight like this. And we might see that. I'm guessing we will. Now, he can cast this on his entire team. This gives 50 magic damage per hero. So that means a total of 150 magic damage. It does slightly reduce your attack speed, but for a level 1 team fight, this is arguably the best skill that you could have. And here comes the initiation. He's going to be doing Reality Ref first, surprisingly, and oh, not able to snag at anybody? And Anybody? Oh, Darkseer, what are you doing, man? He's like, I want to fight this. There's the first disruption. All right, where are we going to see any right clicks? Not a whole lot so far. The extra magic damage on Darkseer is pretty insane, but so far he survives. Wisp is able to get the kill, falling up on the next hero, and it's going to be on the Leshrac. Will Leshrac go down? Needs one more hit. <laughs> he pops the salve, though. That'll keep him alive, and the salve does get disabled, so... I don't like the Reality Rift choice. This could be a stun. Stuns are pretty good, I hear. Sure, they could they could Wisp Tether stun, but that's a .75 stun. That's not that good at all. I don't like that decision-making here. They almost lost them a kill. They only got one kill out of that, and I think they should have gotten a lot more, honestly. Like the tilling, Chilling Touch choice. That was cool. But uh, weird team fight there. Sticky Napalm is a great level 1 spell as well. And they are aggressive tri laning again, so they're going to be doing a Wisp, Chaos Knight, and a... Uh, Ancient Apparition. This is going to be against a Juggernaut, Leshrac, Shadow Demon. Um, they are going to be doing... They have the better tri lane. That's, that's for sure. They definitely have the better tri lane here. One Observe Ward is placed down. One Sentry as well to start things off. They were concerned about a lane ward, but in reality, the ward is actually uh, blocking the pull spot. And how long will it take till they initiate? They can't really initiate as well now because they don't have a stun. Juggernaut's sitting on an interesting mask. 
And on the mid lane, it's a Barretter versus a Meg. Oh, I love this. He actually left the DD for the Barretter so that he could win the lane. Um, that's pretty cool. It's actually a huge advantage on the mid lane if you do get a DD at level 1. Mag is going to be unable to get any last hits for the first couple waves, which means that Barretter is going to get his bottle much, much before Magnus. Though Magnus went for a magic stick anyway, so it doesn't matter that much that he doesn't have a bottle, in my opinion. And he actually picked up Skewer level 1 as well, I uh, probably as a result of... Uh, running into the five heroes in the jungle, he was like, okay, maybe I can use Skewer to escape or something. I'm not sure. I didn't catch what he used it for, but um, there's an Observer Ward over here. Uh, sentries are placed, and I don't think they actually caught the ward, so they're not going to be able to pull here. Being outdone a little bit by the warding from rocks. Um, usually, if you do want to deward a ward, you want to place your sentry right here, actually. And this will prevent, protect you against pretty much any ward in this area. You can even catch this Observer Ward. Um, that is usually placed there. They're going for a gank here. Will they be able to rally rift? Almost. They have the vision. There it is. They get it. Here comes the stun. Great disruption actually from Shadow Demon. But in a second, we're going to get a stun. And here comes one second. And man, that damage output was insane. They might even be able to chase down Shadow Demon. Look at the extra bonus damage they get from it. It's pretty huge. Spirits as well. Here comes the tether. He's in trouble. Needs to get the tether stun off. Come on, Chaos Knight. Run to the front. He didn't do it. And this might cost him. Uh, they've got big movement speed though. I think they've still got this. And yeah, he will go down. I dare say that A should have stayed in lane, though. Slight mistake from him. He could be getting some solo EXP right now while they got that kill. I mean, he wasn't going to catch up to them regardless, so I think he should have stayed in the lane, but not that big of an issue. Uh, Io may be going for a dive here. Will they dive this? He's thinking about it. Here comes the Firefly. There's the first Napalm stack and the Tether Stun as well. I don't know if this is going to be enough damage. He sends it back. Actually, this might do it, but Shadow Demon's going to disrupt him. This will buy him a second. Pretty nice play here. And will he die? Nope, he's going to stay alive. He has a six charge wand as well. The dive was a little bit overly aggressive, I think. Actually, the, the biggest mistake, I think, by that dive was that Batrider had no Napalm stacks on the on the um, Magnus before that, that dive started. So he was able to get a little bit farther back than normal. So Safe lane farm is the Necrolite. He's up against a long lane Darkseer, which is actually a pretty good lane for him. If he gets last hits, he does get some mana out of it. Two levels of Sadus for him at the moment and some HP heal as well. So every last hit for him right now gives him a total of 24 HP. That's really good. Um, he's got a Ring of Bastilius picked up, and he has it turned on so that the wave pushes, I think. Um, but at the moment, the Darkseer Ion Shell is obviously doing some good work here. Especially when you have two of them. Look at that. He's still getting last hits, though. Um, picks up another last hit. Going to be just fine. Darkseer could maybe dive this, though. This is looking a little scary for the Necrolite. Picks up another one. Doesn't have any regen left over, though. He really needs to get his uh, Sadus as well as Death Pulse levels up. Once he does, he can actually nuke down the wave pretty cost-efficiently. But at the moment, sitting only at level 4, it's going to be a tough time. So even missing some denies like this can cause a lot of problems. But he does finally use a Death Pulse to try to keep his creeps alive a little bit longer. He's actually out of mana now, so it's got to be very, very careful here. But still getting more last hits is going to make this a lot easier. Mid lane Bat Riders up to how many last hits? 13 and 4. Magnus sitting at 13 and 2. He's done a really good job coming back here. Regen is also picked up, so he's going to be having a pretty good time. Going to be doing another Shockwave in a second here. Actually, he's being dived on. He needs to get out of there. Save Captain Bamboo. The courier needs to live. I don't care about what else happens. Shockwave is, uh, does some damage to Bat Rider again. And regen able to be used, and he's going to go to the top lane. It's actually a sentry ward city. They're kind of a weird place for a sentry. The sentry ward has literally been used to scout out the ward. Since they, that was a really weird ward choice. It's like, okay, well, I, I don't know if I like that completely. He does a shockwave to get some vision. He does not see Batrider high ground, so he will be able to secure himself the Invisorin. Darkster, in the meantime, is now cutting creeps completely, which is actually pretty good for Denker Light. He doesn't take as much damage here, and he's got enough regen and HP. Uh, to be survivable from this one. So he'll take two last hits from that. And Darkseer may be coming for a dive. He's thinking about it. Barret getting killed on the mid lane from a gank from Leshrac Shadow. Deep. A nice gank there. Those two supports don't have too much HP. And in the meantime, they're ganking Juggernaut top. They have used Reality Rift. They'll probably dive this. And they should. Here comes the stun. One second. A little unlucky there. But they still will be able to snag the Juggernaut kill. So 4-2 to two games. A lot closer than it was in the past. Creep as uh, Creeps are skipped once again. And the dive will come. Necrolite has no mana here. This is going to cost him a lot. He just can't block, he can't, uh, just can't survive the creeps like he could before. He has one death pulse and that is it. And here comes the gank. Edict is going to be used. There's the soul catcher. I'm not sure why they didn't start this off better, but he's going to be able to dive into the tower. Wow, a little bit of a miss gank there, big time, I would say. Shadow Demon going to eat a stun any second here. Three seconds stun and a couple right clicks. Man, I think they did that way wrong. They needed to send in the Dark Seer. I'm sorry, the Shadow Demon needed to go first. They disrupt, they land the Lesrex stun, and, and he was dead. He did not deserve to live there at all, I don't think. 
Still getting last hits here, and that's going to heal him up quite a bit. Again, about 20 HP per last hit. Little gank on Bat Rider in the middle. Actually, wow, nice play. He puts Lesh Rack on the low ground. He's going to be pulling them towards the creeps. Uh, forgot to stack, apparently. Oh, he's still going to go down regardless. He needed to put Napalm on before he lassoed him, but regardless, a really, really nice job there. They're looking for the next hero. It's actually Magnus, and he pops his invis, so he's going to be just fine. Juggernaut on the top lane. Stout shield. Double stat levels. Um, really not getting a whole lot of farm, though. And A now getting solo farm versus him. He's actually maxing out Chilling Touch with Cold Feet. Interesting choice. Chaos Knight shifting back towards the top lane. And Magnus going to try to make some plays. Bot Necrolite is actually decently healed right now. Picks up some treads, surprisingly. Just need an Iron Shell on Darkseid. There's the first ulti. He's going to skewer him all the way back to the tower. Good choice here. And this should be a Necrolite death. Yeah, pretty easy there. Nice play by Mag. I like that. Um, didn't hesitate at all. Just RPs and skewers in a tower range. You really can't undervalue how effective that is to land three or four tower shots. It's a couple hundred. It's like 200 points of damage. You might as well. It's the same as a Shockwave, for example. So it really pays off hard. Okay, so on the top lane, getting some more last hits from Chilling Touch. And then he's going back to base. He's got Omer mana, so we might as well swing back, I guess. One kill, seven denies. Necrolite TP into the bot lane now. It's going to start things off with a Death Pulse. It's almost got maxed out Death Pulse. He's doing a really good job last hitting. He hasn't really missed that many. Nice plays from him so far. Oh, I like that. He's, oh, I didn't think about that. He's tread switching when he uses status. I haven't thought about that before. I always prefer uh, phase boots on Necrolite myself, but this is a really good point. If you tread switch while he gets status regen, it's like using a bottle. Very cool. Hmm. I have not thought about that before. Another Death Pulse being used, more mana. And as soon as he hits uh, level level 9, I think it is, Scott just has to get a Seda stuff, but he's going to be doing really well. Another gank coming, though. Level 2 Shadow Demon. Man, these guys are underleveled. This is going to cost... A, like, they really need to start getting a crap load of kills. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot they can do this game. Darkseer's still getting a lot of farm, though. He's pretty close to his mech. And will they initiate? He's playing it really safe. Oh, that's why. His award can see them. <laughs> that helps. Gank coming top. Shadow Demon looks pretty dead here. He does go down. Juggernaut as well. There's the TP from Lesh, and Lesh says, okay, my TP is a little late. Stun is not going to land, and now he has the possibility to get a kill here. Two right clicks, and I think this is going to be a dead Lesh rack. I, actually, is it going to be enough? It's going to be close. Run for your life. Don't stop running. Will you live? He does die. 206 damage is done. And Necrolite gets the kill. Look at the mana gain. Huge mana gain from that one. Really helps to kill enemy heroes. Raiding team is looking pretty good, though. What's the GPM at? Three guys. Uh, Darkseer is actually doing the best, but um, the next three heroes are the Radiant. So, EX or Gold Graph is pretty high. EXP is not as high as it was in the previous game. And this is going to be a Soul Ring for the Darkseer, actually. So, Soul Ring coming in for him, as well as the Buckler. I'm sorry, he's had Soul Ring the whole time. Magnus picking up a uh, haste rune on the mid lane, uh, going for a bottle next, and Batrider actually spending some time juggling, level 8 for him. Um, is this worth it over the mid lane though? He is taking some tower damage, possible slight mistake from him. And he actually completely ran out of regen here, so unable to take uh, both the lanes. Leshrak looking for some heroes top, he's level 3, they could grab some kills quite easily here. Level, wow, he's actually maxing out chilling touch. And they may run into Mag. This is not looking good for Mag. Nope, instead it's going to be Leshrac. One stun. Was that even worth it? There's an Omni Slash coming through. He's looking for the RP Shockwave to start things off. And here comes Skewer. Shockwave. Oh no, he whiffs it. I can't believe it. I thought that was going to hit for sure. And instead, the next Tether stun. Cast Knight getting really low. Throws another stun. But can they get him? Oh man, he jukes the Juggernaut. Juggernaut should get this though. Juggernaut grabs it. Shockwave actually going to snag the kill. And a little too aggressive there. Nice Tether from the Wisp. And he is going to run for his life here. Should be able to survive. Darkster does not have boots yet. Is it going to give uh, Leshrac, I'm sorry, Necrolite some more free farm here? And uh, Necrolite going for my favorite Necrolite item, which is Mechanism. I think it's great on him. He has a huge mana pool. The extra burst heal is usually enough to keep him alive. And Necrolite getting some much needed solo EXP here. Wisp, oh, in trouble. Tony Montana is able to snag the kill. Great skewer there. Two second stun. Drum as well. A little bit of attack speed on the Magnus. Cancels some animations, though, and he does, does get disrupted. Here comes the stun. Stun's a little bit early here. And this could be Cast Knight getting some more kills. He's doing some great damage. Look at that damage. Lashrak in trouble. Does get killed. But the Edict 
Reality Rift as well. Magnus does get picked off. One lasso on top of the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon is going to throw some Shadow Poison. That's about all he can do here. And another Flame Break. Here comes the TP. Do they have a stun? They do. Four seconds stun. And Darkseer does not have a chance. And Chaos Knight's just so farmed at this point. It doesn't really matter if there's three heroes on top of him. He can tank up the entire enemy team. I mean, the hero level is insane. Two level three heroes on the bot lane. I think they needed to make more happen top lane. I mean, it wasn't that bad of a try lane. I think they just could have gone for somebody like Ancient Apparition and maybe secured a kill. I mean, at level 1, we even knew that Chaos Knight only had Reality Rift. I think they should have been more aggressive there. But things are just way too out of control now. They can just 5-man. Uh, they don't have the mecha quite yet on Necrolite because he did die once, but... You know, his farm is still fantastic, though. 72, 72 CS under tower last hitting is great. He's done a great job. Juggernaut's been able to deny a top tower, but... I mean, he hasn't really been able to accomplish anything himself. I just think the the skill level on Orox is a little bit too high compared to Rocks here. And that was the main problem. Chaos Knight's going to kill the tower now. And the rest of the heroes, I mean, that's a tier 2 at 11 minutes. That is not a good thing to look forward to. Juggernaut's doing his best to farm, but only level 8. He's got phase boots, and he is not anywhere near the uh, net worth of Chaos Knight. Look at this. He's fourth from the bottom, actually, and that's their hard carry. Ugh. Not a good situation to be in. So let's see what they can do about this. I, I think Lestrak and Shadow Demon need to go try to find farm somewhere or something. I mean, we don't even have boots on Shadow Demon just yet. Necrolite hit the magic number, which is 9, so his sadist level is now fantastic. Uh, it should have a mech flying out. Yep, mech flying out, blink dagger, and an urn. Just a ton of stuff for the Radiant team. Um, that's a blink on Batrider, by the way, with his boots. So everything is going great for the Radiant team. We have uh, three levels of Chilling Touch still. This tower will go down. The support heroes are just kind of standing around. They could have farmed a jungle camp maybe in the meantime here. Not the best time management out of them. Though, I mean, things are pretty out of control at this point in their defense. I like the A ultimate. It's going to stop or slow down the push at least. 250 damage for the A ulti at level 1, which is pretty good. Batrider looking for hero kills. Just clearing some trees out. Is he going to go deep? Oh, he is. I was going to grab the Leshrac. Shadow Demon not quite in position for this one. Hastrun really helping out. And that's another dead support hero. And this just might be the end of the game here. Creeps going high ground. Will they be able to snag anybody? I mean, the Dire team just can't even contest this. Look at this. They're literally sitting in their fountain. Drum is utilized here, and Batrider, is he looking for somebody? He doesn't have a lasso at the moment, though. Okay, he's just putting some fire down on the creeps. That's it. There's a stun. Tony Montana, that's the hero they can't let die. He's going to get killed by the Reaper Scythe. And they needed that mag ulti to do anything in this fight. Juggernaut's still spinning, trying to snag some kills, but Leshrac goes down. Mag finally going for it. He grabs three, but is it going to do anything? The Flame Break, the mech, the Death Pulse is going to keep him healed. Even the Omni Slash, not enough to score kills. And the heals are too much on rocks, and it looks like they are going to be able to win this game. 20 to 5. Not quite as one side as the last game, but man, they just don't have any damage on the dire on the yeah, on the dire team. They just don't have anything. Another shockwave Leshrac's gonna go down. Tower's still alive, but I, I just don't think it's gonna do anything here. A bot racks 14 minutes. We'll see a GG any minute here, surely from Orox. And this is looking really good for Rox. They're guaranteed at least 1,000 euros in this tournament. If they make it into the grand finals. If you make a grand finals, you're not. Wow, did you see that damage? That was insane. Man, Flame Break is a lot of their HP at this point. They can't even leave their fountain. Armlet finished up for the Chaos Knight, and the tried and true Chaos Knight Wisp is going to work. Good game is called finally, and the Radiant team is going to take it. So that is the winner bracket finals. That means that Rox is going to gonna go to the grand finals, guaranteed at least 1,000 euros in this tournament. There's the ulti going in. How many can they kill? All of them. All right, they're all dead. Wait, Darkseer's alive. Darkseer, man, strong hero. Good right clicks. And that's going to be the end of the game. So Rox versus Orox, that's grand. Or, I'm sorry, the winner bracket final. We're going to be taking a look at the loser's bracket final in just a second.
And uh, immediately after that, we'll be checking out the grand final, which we'll, we'll uh, catch rocks. We'll see who's going to be up against them in the finals. Yep, this was the um, GameCon Plantronics EU tournament. Uh, there was a North American one uh, a couple months ago, like two months ago. This is not a rebroadcast. I'm doing this live. We're just watching replays, though. Uh, we'll be back in just a bit, guys, with the Loser Bracket Final. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. If you guys want to find out more about the tournament or check out the GameCon Plantronics Dota 2 headsets, you can go to gamecom.plantronics.com and check those out. See you in a bit.